So what it's doing is charging itself when the energy tariffs are cheap, so you're not wasting your money. It's also only charging what you want, so you're not wasting energy, yeah. which then in turn saves your carbon footprint. That makes that quite low as well. 25% of a typical home energy bill is for heating water. Reducing this figure can save energy, money, and lower your carbon emissions. With a growing number of solutions available, we're off to MixG to see how their smart water tanks do just that. Welcome to the Everything Electric Show. Like the Everything Electric Show? Then you will love our live shows being held around the world in 2023. Next, we're back in the UK for our two, yes, two UK shows. First, we're in Farnborough in April. Then we're heading to our first ever event in the north, in Harrogate, in May. Today, we're looking at solutions for two types of property. Those with clean energy tech, such as solar panels and air source heat pump, and those without, with a more conventional setup. Pete, this is your most popular tank. Can you go through how this works? Sure, so this is a standard 150 litre unvented hot water tank. So be usually fitted in a house that has three or four people living in it, a bathroom or two. And what we're trying to do is the opposite of a regular tank, which would be heating everything like a big giant kettle. And we're, our objective is to only heat what you need. So we're heating the water first at the top and then pushing it down and relying on thermal stratification to keep the hot and the cold separate. And at the same time, we can see how much hot water is, is on the gauge. So can you give us a bit more detail of how it heats from top to bottom instead of bottom to top? Sure. So we take all the stuff that heats the water and put it to the top of the tank, whether that's the immersion electric elements, yeah. whether that's a coil for a gas boiler or a heat pump. And then we heat a small volume of water mm -hmm. first, initially, very quickly. To do that, we have this little pump which draws cold water from the very base of the cylinder and then injects it into the top through this little device that spreads the water evenly so that it basically attains the same temperature as there is at the top instantly. Yeah. As this pump runs, it pushes the hot water down whilst you continue to heat. So you're always keeping this um, balance between the cold water coming to the top yeah. and the heat energy going in so it's a nice even temperature all the way down. And what do these boxes do at the front? Can you tell us a bit more about what's on the front of the tank? Yeah, so this is a lot of boxes because it's trying to cater to every conceivable thing for demonstration purposes. But you might actually only have one or two depending upon what you have. So here we have a solar diverter. So if someone has solar panels on the roof, then this system will measure any export electricity at the fuse board, the consumer unit in the home. And it will make sure that that's been turned instead of leaving the house, it's, an, it's turned into free hot water. This is the HP heat pump interface. So if we um, fit a heat pump in the future, we need to do two things. So we need to transfer heat, which we do with this plate heat exchanger, but we also need to talk to the heat pump and its electronics via this interface, which okay. basically speaks the heat pump, calls for heat. Yes. This is the main controller. This is on every tank. Uh, so this has a computer and it, it, it also talks to the sensor um, and the little control stock here it also connects the tank to the internet so you can then control it from your phone um, so that's that's that box and then this is a little pump that allows us to stratify the heat and keep pushing the energy down when it sucks it right from the very bottom of the tank and sprays it across the top yes yes correct okay if you had a gas boiler you'd also have a couple of connections for a coil at the top of the cylinder so when it comes to this solar PV box, it's, this is your own brand, but can you integrate it with third party ones? You can, and we have an, yeah, another box which allows you to do that. It's called the PV switch. Mm -hmm. So if you say have a solar eye boost or um, uh, a My Energy Eddy, yep. um, then it will interface with that product and it will bring the uh, surplus energy in the same way to the top of the tank. So you didn't have to buy that when you can, if you already have that, reuse it as well. You so can. More money. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so if, um, say they had a combi boiler, can this be retrofitted to, to integrate with that? Actually, yes. Yeah. So combi boilers can be configured as a system boiler. So although a combi boiler will produce instantaneous hot water, you can actually configure it to work with a hot water tank. Why would you do that? Well, there's two reasons. One, you can actually get more efficiency out of a, a combi boiler with a, a modern, well-insulated hot water tank. That's because combi boilers, when they're delivering small intermittent um, draw events, like a tap turning on, um, they have a cycling overhead. So they have to heat up the flue, the heat exchangers, yeah. just for a small quantity of hot water. And it's actually quite inefficient compared to a well-insulated tank. How does the machine learning on the mixture reduce energy wastage then? 
Yeah, sure. Well, it's maybe worth starting by saying how do people control a regular hot water tank? And it's usually via a t simple timer. So just turn the whole tank on. It heats everything for some uh, some number of hours. Or sometimes they're just on all the time and they're just constantly re-top up themselves from the bottom, heating everything, uh, which is quite wasteful. So instead what we do here is, uh, as we were talking earlier, we have this sensor that measures how full or, or not the tank is uh, in terms of hot water. And by looking at the change in that level, we can be able to build a picture of how much is being used over time, what particular time of day um, the, the, the usage looks like. As that picture emerges, the tank can learn uh, to the extent that it can say, well, actually, we only need to heat 40% uh, rather than the whole tank, right, which yeah. uh, reduces, reduces the heat losses considerably. Um, and also it can factor in the supplier tariff that you're on. So if you're on, let's just say you're on an economy seven and um, during the morning, it's up to seven o'clock in the morning, it's uh, eight or nine P per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. And then it jumps all the way up to say 30 P at, at night. Yeah. Then the software will take that into account. So it will say, well, even though people don't get up until sort of 10, 11 in the morning, wherever they are, <laughs> Uh, it's worth us heating from 5 a.m. to uh, 6.30 to get that yeah. buffer of uh, hot water because um, we know that's going to last and it's way, way cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it can make those sorts of des decisions without you having to like, you know, get out a slide rule and figure it out for yourself. We had our Mixergy tank installed about three years ago now. The first I'd seen a Mixergy was on the Fully Charged show. Uh, I saw Robert take the owner around his house and they, they looked at the app, they looked at all the data and the graphs. What I really liked was that it worked like a battery. What I always found at home was that we'd fill the whole tank and some days we only needed maybe half or maybe even a quarter. So I thought it would be a really good uh, opportunity for us at home to switch to something far more suitable. And it would also get us on that path towards electrification as well. Our house previously had a gas boiler set up where the boiler would supply the hot water. So we switched instead to having the mixer G using electricity, using the immersion and our solar panels. Our house holds two adults, two children, fairly typical family. Installation was really easy and straightforward. Uh, they came in, they switched the system from vented to, to direct mains water, which just, just made our water system better anyway. Uh, and on top of that, they had to put a few extra electrical connections in as well for both the solar diverter and for the main immersion in the Mixergy. The running costs have been really affordable too. Uh, we found that uh, the last, each of the last couple of years, it's been about £35 for the year. This year will increase, of course, with the electricity price increases, but we still only think it will be about £70. It's great to have something that's a really affordable solution for our hot water. I really love the data and the graphs and the charts that you get. I tend to show it to everybody, whether they want to see it or not. Uh, it's a really brilliant piece of kit and I'd, I'd really encourage people to take up the option. Installation can be a point of concern. Will this fit your current hot water cylinder is? Yeah, so we have a range of sizes, slim and standard diameter like we have here and capacities from 120 litres all the way up to 300. So it will fit in any standard airing cupboard. Uh, we generally ask for a 700 by 700 um, square footprint for a standard size like this, and slightly smaller if it's a slim line. And future proofing for this, this particular um, mixture cylinder, if I say got an indirect, meaning that I got it for my gas boiler, can I then convert it over for a heat pump in the future? Yes, absolutely. So every tank that we sell is what we say heat pump ready. So they come with a couple of blanked ports, mm -hmm. which you can unblank and fit this plate heat exchange arrangement to, which then can hook up to an outboard air source heat pump, ground source heat pump, or, yeah. or what, what have you, or even a hybrid uh, heat pump setup, depending upon what you go for. Uh, so yeah, you don't, these last for 25 years of stainless steel, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a long life product. So we wanted them to be um, relevant to whatever future energy system that you integrate around in the home. And none of the tech that's on the front here, none of that's going to get in the way? No, none of it protrudes any further than you would find with a regular immersion heating element cap or uh, the pipe work that you'd need to bring in for a, a coil or for any of the other plumbing that you'd find in a standard cylinder. Cost is always a consideration and I know that every insole is different. But where does the mixture tank range generally start from? Yeah, generally from around the £1,200 mark, which is in the same ballpark as a stainless steel cylinder. And given its long lifespan and the savings, we like to think it more than offsets any difference in cost. 
So what it's doing is charging itself when the energy tariffs are cheap, so you're not wasting your money. It's also only charging what you want, so you're not wasting energy, yeah. which then in turn saves your carbon footprint. That makes that quite low as well. Exactly. And actually, when the energy is cheap, it's generally lower carbon mm -hmm. because it's, energy is generally cheaper when there's lots of renewables in the system, which typically happens at night when there's a lot of wind relative to gas supply yeah. from a generation perspective. So they're constant and you're using less energy. So by definition, they're, they're less carbon. Mixed you will be exhibiting at both of our UK events in 2023 and the team will be on hand to help you with any questions you might have. The dates are down below. I hope to see you there. With hot water making up a quarter of our bills, solutions like these from Mixergy are a great way of making a real impact. All the links are in the description below. And as always, if you have been, thanks for watching.